Martin. Uh, Martin is a principal scientific officer at the IMI Executive Office, which is the office in charge of organizing the uh, IMI activities, organizing the course for proposals, and uh, looking at the progress of the different uh, projects. And has a long experience in the pharma industry, about 25 years, he just told to me, so that she uh, perfectly knows what's the expectation of the industry, and she is also very well connected to the other partners in our knowledge management project. And she will tell us about how the executive office sees the future of knowledge management, and also tell us about some of the current activities. Yes. Thank you. So by now you all know my age, um, after <laughs> you know that I've been 25 years in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, so knowledge management at uh, IMI, the present and the future. Uh, let me start with an introductory slide. Uh, it's a bit of a provocative slide, at least the first bullet point there, is that there is a general problem in the data intensive sciences with the management of data sources, information and knowledge within and between institutions, I would say, public and private institutions, between departments, scientific dis disciplines and collaborative projects. The reason is that we all tend to create our own data islands and those data islands don't talk to one another. Some data islands are very big, others are very small. Um, but the, the, the big problem here is that they are islands and there is no interoperability. Furthermore, um, a lot of that data that is being generated is not, is, is exploited for the particular specific purpose for which it is being collected. However, it could be exploited further, um, say that there is a new modeling and simulation approach that appears uh, new knowledge appears, can we uh, use the legacy data to actually um, look again at, at the information in a new light. Um, and finally, there is um, a, another problem, and I think there are probably many others, is the incompatibility of analysis tools. We have analysis tools that require variables with four that are not allowed to be longer than four characters, others have to be eight characters, um, yet others have to be, um, uh, can be any length. So um, if you want to change um, from one tool to another to try a new analytic approach, you often are faced with a mapping exercise to actually uh, get that, uh, your data into the other tool, which is no fun. Um, so IMI aims to address um, the bottlenecks in uh, pharmaceutical research through uh, especially the knowledge management bottlenecks through dedicated knowledge management projects as well as sharing best practices in terms of managing the knowledge generated in each of the IMI collaborative projects. At the moment, we have 23 ongoing IMI projects that, and all of them have a KN component. Most projects are sharing data and aiming to uh, derive new knowledge from both retrospective and prospective, uh, prospectively generated data. The KN platforms, uh, at the moment, we start seeing some kind of sharing of a particular um, open source um, so platform, which is a Transmart platform, and it currently has been adopted in, in two IMI projects, and but others are um, evaluating it and um, very seriously evaluating it. The, uh, uh, the, we have a memorandum of understanding in progress with the CDISC organization, which is a standards organization who has data content standards for um, clinical research, mainly, but we, which could be expanded. And we have initiated a knowledge management work group. We then have three knowledge management projects which are up and running since the 1st of March of this year. 
The first one is, is a project in which um, Oscar is involved and, and uh, managed by Lutz Harnish from um, Pfizer. Uh, and it is about improving the environment for modeling and simulation, but also creating uh, libraries of drug disease models um, that could be reutilized by other per persons and refined. The Open Facts platform is an open platform for drugs and tickets, and there we are using a um, RDF triple store approach to actually uh, come up the um, with, with, with a platform with all the information in, in a single format. Uh, you, you finally, we have EHR for CR, which you've heard before from Roma, which is um, especially the business model and, and, and the data privacy model for using EHRs for clinical research, and with also with the objective of um, enriching those EHR. Uh, EHRs. There are some shared tasks among these three KM projects and they're basically in the domain of ontology development. What will we have for the future? There will be um, future IMI projects will have a KM component, that's certain, and they will need some kind of guidance and help as to uh, what are the, the, the standards that we should use, uh, how should we tackle interoperability so that we do not yet again create new data islands. And there will be two knowledge management call topics uh, which are in the draft stage. The first one is the one that uh, Roma um, referred to, which is a European medical information framework of patient level data in support of a wide range of research studies. Uh, and the other one is the ETHICS project, which is a European translational information and knowledge management services, where the Transmart platform would be taken and we would build on that to uh, create translational uh, knowledge management and information management for, in the first stage, for the IMI projects, but later uh, we could envisage um, other public-private uh, partnerships. Uh, in, in the context of this particular project, I also want to uh, mention a large um, collaboration with Sage Bio Networks uh, in the US, who is adopting the platform. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anne. I think that this was a very good primer for our session this afternoon, which will be fully dedicated to IMI project. It will be in OC room C4. What I would, what I hope is that at this stage you are indeed convinced that uh, there is a urgent need, I would say, for pharmaceutical company for new approach to knowledge management, data sharing and that also you realize that uh, in Europe the Innovative Medicines Initiative is offering unique opportunity to implement the changes and the new tools which are indeed necessary for at the end provide better medicines to our patients. So thank you very much and enjoy your lunch. Thank you very much to all our speakers of course.